Hey there, good to see you. Welcome to 10 TV Plus. Well, this January has been super cold so far. We are January 21st today. We still have about 10 more days left of the month, but here's the thing. You and I both know it's been a cold month. If January were to end right now, this would go down as the 11th coldest January so far, going all the way back since the 1800s. The reason why is because the mornings have been super cold. The evenings have been super cold as well. By the way, fun fact, what was the coldest January recorded in the Columbus metro area? January 1977. We had so many frigid mornings there at that point in time. And then also even the daytime highs were cold in January of that year. Most of these uh, were in the 1900s. Very few actually occurred in the 21st century, but let's go ahead and move on. If you don't like the cold, we are at the worst of it right now. The climatological coldest time of the year, right about now, January the 20th. That was yesterday. And then it's all uphill from here. A month out from now, the average temperature is 33 degrees. And then as we had a month and a half out, a month and a half away from today, 38 is the average temperature by that point in time. Now let's take a look at snowfall so far for this season. And in fact, the last three years have all been kind of neck and neck here. Take a look at this right here. For this winter, we've had 12.2 inches. As we look at last winter, we had 12.6, but this is for the whole winter. This is just this winter so far. And so if things continue progressing the way that they have been, we should surpass the last three years, maybe the last four years. Uh, 2020, 2021, we actually had a pretty good winter at that point in time. We had almost 28 inches of snowfall. By the way, this is for John Glenn Airport in the city of Columbus. All right, the cold isn't going anywhere for the next 36 hours. We have one more day, one more day that we got to get through and then things will improve. The blue on the map is a extreme cold warning. And then as we head down to the south, we have a cold weather advisory. What's the difference if you live in the blue? which some of you do, we're looking at wind chills down as low as negative 30. And if you live in this lighter shading color, we are looking at wind chills as low as negative 20. So in other words, if you live further to the north, it's a little bit more dangerous. Sub zero wind chills for one more day. We get past tomorrow and then things will be on the men. Now, as we look at this afternoon, man, take a look at these numbers. Even in the afternoon, the warmest time of the day, we're looking at wind chills around negative five, and then it's all downhill from there. As we go into tomorrow morning, we're talking wind chills negative 10, negative 15. You gotta bundle up, gotta take those cold weather precautions when we're dealing with temperatures this frigid. Now, as we look at Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning, about six o'clock, take a look at this Green Bay, Saginaw, around negative 10 and negative 15. Cleveland also negative 16. So the cold is going to be here for tomorrow and then things eventually skedaddle and improve. Now, frostbite can set in very, very quickly in about a half hour when temperatures are between zero and negative 20. Luckily, it hasn't been this cold. I mean, there have been parts of the U.S. of the U.S. that have had wind chills as bad as negative 40. Knock on wood, that hasn't been the case here across Ohio, but there's still time. We still got all of uh, the rest of January and February to get through. All right, so let's walk you through the wind chill going into tonight. And the difference between what we're seeing to the north and down to the south is that we have more wind up there. You have more wind, it's going to knock down that feels like temperature. You head further down to the southeast, well, obviously things are going to be a little bit better. By 4 o'clock this afternoon, negative 5 is what it will feel like in Columbus. Not as bad down here where the wind isn't quite as strong. But then let's stop it right there. 6 o'clock in the morning. This is my concern right here. Our northern counties, B. Cyrus, Marion, negative 19. Kenton, also negative 19. And then as we look further off to the east, we're looking at temperatures around negative 5 to negative 15. And then you head down to Piketon. No wind for you tonight. So 5 is what it will feel like tomorrow morning. Gusty winds possible for today, and man, that's the kind of wind that just kind of cuts right through you. It'll make things feel exceptionally uncomfortable. Tonight, though, the winds won't be quite as bad, and then as we head towards tomorrow morning, we'll be looking at a little bit of wind out there as well. So when we talk about the wind chill index, again, what this means is that as your body tries to heat itself up, essentially the wind knocks away all that progress. And so typically your body will have warm air 
around it. You wear clothes, obviously. Hopefully you wear clothes that will insulate you. What happens though is that when you get wind, it wicks away the moisture around your skin and all that heat, all that insulation goes to waste because you're pushing that heat away from your body. And then that leads to more evaporation. More evaporation leads to more heat loss. It's as simple as that. It's like walking out of the shower and then you walk into the living room and you can feel the cold. Okay. Same exact idea. It's what happens when the weather gets this cold out here. Here's the good news though, folks. All right. Here's your polar vortex. Okay. You can pick it out like a sore thumb right here. The pinks on the map and we have these uh, magenta colors, but then look at this here. We get rid of the cold air. Now we're going to be tracking some of that milder air as we tap into some of the warmer air coming in from the Gulf. That's going to allow for a 180 turnaround heading into this weekend as we finally climb above freezing for the first time. And I don't know how long Sunday Sunday was the last time that we saw temperatures above 32 degrees. OK, take a look at this right here. So as we head into tomorrow, 17, it's not what you want, but it's better than today. But then look at Saturday and Sunday. Now we're back up to 34 and 37 respectively. So progress will be made at that point in time. As we look ahead from now until February the 4th, what are we looking at here? Below average temperatures for New England, but we're not really looking at any major cold outbreaks anytime soon. If anything, we're kind of flirting with these lighter colors on the map that represent above average temperatures. So that could be a step in the right direction. Rainfall outlook shows that we are looking at near normal rainfall for the start of February. Now, as we get a better look at the temperatures, right here is our cold Arctic air outbreak. Here's your polar vortex right here. That yellow line shows that once we get towards January the 26th, which is this weekend, finally we are back up to normal. But the whole point of this graph is that I'm trying to show you we're not looking at any more cold Arctic outbreaks anytime soon. If there were any cold out outbreaks, that yellow line would be way down here. We don't see that anytime soon, at least not for the next 10 days. All right. And this takes you through January the 31st, which is the end of the month. That's good news. Let's take you outside today. We have a weak disturbance moving on through. We're talking about maybe a flurry that might last 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. I don't know. And then things will start improving tonight. We clear things up. That's part of the reason why things are going to get so cold tonight is because that's like yanking off the blankets at night. It, it just takes away the insulation for the, from the lower atmosphere. So as we head towards 8 p.m., we're going to be losing a lot of heat like it's nobody's business. As we head towards tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, we actually begin clear out there and then we'll see clouds building back in by about 10 o'clock in the morning. So we are yet again not looking at a bright sunny day like you probably want to be seeing. All right, let's take a look here at the forecast and you'll notice that as we look at today, temperatures, man, look at how quickly they drop by midnight, negative three. Look how cold it gets as we head into late tonight. That's the air temperature, not even the wind chill. As we look at Wednesday, I want to give you a closer look at what we're looking at. The first half of the day, we have that 10 weather alert. As we head to the afternoon, we don't have the alert. Why? Because we're no longer looking at the dangerous wind chills. It is still uncomfortable, don't get me wrong, but we don't have the dangerous wind chills like what we're seeing out there today. And then as we head towards Sunday, I want to take a, a minute or so, talk about our next system. The models are diverging on where this next low pressure will go. Sunday night going into Monday, we have one of our models that we rely on that takes track further to the north. And then we have another model that takes it further down to the south. Okay, a southerly track would keep us dry, a northerly track could bring in the chance of any kind of rain or snow. All right, so that would be for Sunday night going into Monday. And then as we get a look here at that possible storm, again, early Monday morning, take a look at that. The possibility of a rain snow line across southern Ohio, snowfall across the central part of the state, but we're still about five to six days away. Things can, things will change. Just want to give you the quick heads up that we could be looking at a a few shenanigans, if you will, heading into next week, and then that will move on out of here with some cold air moving back in towards Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Nonetheless, the bottom line is that we finally climb above freezing as we head into the start of the weekend. 
Well, that does it for me here on 10TV+. Tune in for Jerry Martz tonight on 10TV News at 4, 5, and 6.